pictures do a fantastic job at capturing our memories and transporting us back to them on any given day. Of course, throughout the history of photography, there have been some less than great things captured on film. Whether it was something captured right before tragedy, or perhaps a photo that holds a great mystery. On today's top 10 list, I'm going to be covering 10 disturbing photos with dark secrets. In our number 10 spot today, we have John Lennon. Of course, we all know John Lennon as one part of the Beatles who went on after they disbanded to have a very successful solo career. Lennon was not only a musician, but also a peace activist who was strongly anti-war. He was not afraid to display his activism and held a two-week anti-war demonstration. There was a period of three years where the Nixon administration was trying to have him deported for his criticism against the Vietnam War. On December 8th, 1980, Lennon was leaving the Dakota apartment complex when he was stopped by a man named Mark David Chapman. Lennon signed an autograph for Mark, which is what is happening in this photo, and then Lennon went on his way. Little did he know, Mark was going to shoot him later that night. Once Lennon returned to the apartment complex, Mark was there waiting for him to commit his crime. Mark has said he did it mostly for the attention, which is so horrifying, but Mark is also a very religious man who explained that Lennon once saying that the Beatles were more famous than Jesus is what really pushed him to commit this crime. It is very crazy that this photo was captured when Lennon was being kind to who he thought was a fan, and no one could have predicted what would happen just a few hours later. In our number nine spot today, we have the Stanford Prison Experiment. This photo comes from 1971 during the Stanford Prison Experiment. For those of you who aren't familiar with this experiment, it started on August 14th, 1971 and was led by university psychology professor Philip Zimbardo. The experiment took student volunteers and divided them into two groups, one group of prisoners and one group of guards, and they placed all of the volunteers into a fake prison that was created for the experiment. The experiment aimed to see if and how quickly humans would turn evil under the right conditions with the right amount of power. Basically, it was just to try and answer the question of if humans are inherently good or inherently evil. I think everyone was shocked with the results. After only six days, the experiment needed to be concluded because the guards began to absolutely tormenting the prisoners. It really showed the kinds of things humans can be capable of even after such a short time. This photo is definitely reminiscent of that experiment and serves as our reminder. In our number eight spot today, we have the Pioneer's Defense. This photo is known as the Pioneer's Defense and man, does it ever look creepy. This photo comes from 1937 and was taken by a Russian photographer named Viktor Bula. This photo takes place in the Leningrad area, which is now known as St. Petersburg which is the second largest city in Russia. The people in this photo were a part of a group that was the 1930s Russian equivalent of our Boy Scouts, which was called the Young Pioneers. The masks on their faces leave a very eerie feeling, and for a fair reason. These people were doing a military preparation drill, which is the reason for the gas masks. This photo was taken during a time when the country was under the dictatorship of Joseph Stalin, and the residents were constantly unsure of what was going to happen. The country was already seeing death, and people were already frightened just a few years before the start of World War II. In our number seven spot today, we have the Stanley Hotel. This is a photo of the Stanley Hotel, which is the hotel that inspired the famous Stephen King novel, The Shining. This hotel was under construction in the early 1900s and saw a fateful day in 1911. There was an unexplained explosion that happened in room 217. In the explosion, a chambermaid was seriously injured, but she ended up surviving and actually returning to work. A few years later, she passed away, and ever since her passing, there have been tons of guests who swear they saw her ghost. Guests have said that they have seen her around the halls of the hotel, but the place that gets the most paranormal activity is of course room 217. This is the room where Stephen and his wife stayed for one terrifying night in 1974. Apparently they were actually the only guests in the hotel for this night, which at any other hotel might be cool, but I feel like this is not what you want from a haunted hotel. In our number six spot today, we have the Rothschild Surrealist Ball. The Rothschild family is one one of the wealthiest and most powerful families there has ever been. For years and years, there have been many rumors swirling about just how powerful and influential
potential they really are, and there are some pretty crazy theories out there. In 1972, the family held a surrealist ball, which is where this photo is from. These photos could be potentially very innocent, but there is just something about these elaborate masks, coupled with the theories about what this family is really up to, that just make it feel very eerie. This party is one of the most legendary there has ever been, and whether or not they really are involved in shady dealings, that still is impressive. In our number five spot today, we have the Salem UFO. On the morning of July 16th, 1952, this photo was captured by Shell Alpert and has stumped people ever since. This photo shows four unidentified objects hovering in the air above Salem, Massachusetts, and was taken at the Salem Coast Guard Air Station. The objects seem to be above the Winter Island and Cat Cove areas, but there really isn't much more that is known about this strange incident. There were a few theories regarding this photo. One is a camera glitch, others think it may have just been light reflecting off of the window that the photo was taken through. But of course there are people who point to similar incidents that happened in the 1950s and of course believe it is proof of extraterrestrial beings. It is very likely we may never know exactly, but the air of mystery it leaves is definitely kind of cool. In our number four spot today we have the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano located in Skamania County, Washington. The volcano is best known for its huge and disastrous eruption on May 18th, 1980. This photograph comes from photographer Robert Landsberg, who was of course in the area at the time of this eruption. Before the eruption, he had visited the area in order to photograph and document all of the changes that were happening. On May 18th, he was within a few miles of the volcano when it erupted. Since he unfortunately was located so close to the explosion, he knew that he would be unable to escape this disaster, so instead of focusing on the impossible, he focused on taking as many pictures as possible. Robert was obviously incredibly brave and dedicated, but also very smart. After snapping as many photos as he could, including this one, he then secured his camera in his backpack and covered his backpack with his body. He knew he was unlikely to survive, but wanted to make sure that these photos did. His body was found 17 days later with his backpack still underneath him. His film was of course developed and has provided geology with some really valuable insights with his close documentation of the eruption. In our number three spot today, we have this burst of joy. You might be looking at this photo wondering how this extremely joyous photo could hold any dark secrets. Well, this photo won a Pulitzer Prize and for a good reason. This photo was captured by Slava Vedder on March 17, 1973 at the Travis Air Force Base in California. The photo shows United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Robert L. Sturm and his family. This was taken as he was being reunited with his family after five years of being held as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam. On October 27, 1967, he was leading a flight of F-105 when he was shot down over Hanoi and held captive until March 14, 1973. I can't imagine what this must have been like for his family because there was a chance that he could have not come home at all. The girl with her arms wide is his 15-year-old daughter, but the look on all of their faces truly captures the pure joy that they are all feeling. In our number two spot today, we have the frozen man of Mount Everest. This photo comes from 1996 and it shows Beck Weathers getting treated after the Mount Everest disaster. The Mount Everest disaster took place on May 10th and 11th in 1996, where there was a blizzard on the mountain that ended up stranding and taking the lives of eight people who were aiming to descend the mountain. Beck was a part of the team who was climbing the mountain on this fateful day and he ended up suffering from snow blindness during the climb. He actually fell into a hypothermic coma because it was so cold and he suffered severe frostbite on his face, hands, and feet. Pretty miraculously, he not only survived, but ended up walking back down to camp in order to get help, where he was then taken by helicopter to receive treatment. He ended up needing his hands, part of his feet, and even his nose amputated, but he survived this whole ordeal, and that is the most important thing. In our number one spot today, we have the Dyatlov Pass incident. If you have never heard of the Dyatlov 
of past incident, you better buckle in because it is so terrifying. This photo was taken in February of 1959 as nine young Soviet hikers set out to trek through the Ural Mountains. They had set up camp and sometime during the night, something happened that made them cut their way out of the tent and all flee the site. Leaving in such a rush, they were of course underdressed for the bitterly cold weather and six of them ended up passing away from hypothermia, which is extremely tragic. The other three, however, is where this story takes a frightening turn. Like I mentioned before, no one knows why they fled the tent in the first place, and the last three hikers were found passed away with severe signs of physical trauma that no one could agree on what had caused it. In 2019, the investigation was reopened, and just last year there was a conclusion that a kind of avalanche called a slab avalanche was the cause of these injuries. Regardless of what happened, this whole incident was of course very tragic, but the mystery behind it definitely takes it to a spooky place. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. My face looks shiny as heck. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, of course we all know John Lennon. I almost call them legend. Different, different John. Both musicians though, who swear they saw her ghost. I go. I don't know why I said ghosts. Gosh, I keep getting notifications on my phone, on my computer, and my brain is like distracted. Jeez, Louise. Man, that one gave me goosebumps. I love you, Robert. And his fam, I'm just gonna say that whole sentence again. I'm not gonna make you edit all of that together because I can't speak. In our number one spot today, we have the Dilatov, Dilatov, just made up a word. 